What's going on, God Zero Nation? This is our God Zero. We are back with the final round of AFL tipping for the 2021 AFL season. I honestly can't believe we got here, especially with all the fuck around we've had with COVID. It's kind of gone quick the last couple of rounds as well. We're on the dawn of finals. They've taken away the pre-finals bye, which means we should actually have the first round of finals going down next week, which is very exciting. Perth seems to be the location that they're going to be held, which I think is great for the competition because, let's face it, if you can't be at the MCG, go over to the Nest in Perth and they've got a great setup going on there. So it'll be interesting to see how the grand final and the finals play out over in WA. But before that, we've got to reflect on the round that was, look forward to the tips that will be, and that's what we're doing right now. Having a look at round 22, I managed to tip six correct tips, which is actually pretty good for me. We started the round off pretty weak, um, and I was bitterly disappointed with this loss. I'm actually quite surprised Richmond managed to stem it back to 39 points. GWS just came out the gates like absolute animals, and I fear what could have been if Toby Green had actually played this game and they had some of the players that they are missing, like uh, you've got Stephen Coniglio and players like that not in the team as well. So very fearful there. Upsetting that it cost Richmond their chance at finals too. We're still mathematically a chance. I don't think it's going to happen though. I'm happy for Richmond to just reset and look forward to 2022 and beyond because I feel we are going to bounce back next year and be in the finals mix again maybe even top four if we can get everything going our way who knows Hawthorne defeating the Bulldogs I did not see now I did give Hawthorne a chance but I didn't think they would uh do the dogs dirty like they did here um and once again same circumstances as Collingwood it took Nathan Buckley's sacking to get Collingwood to turn around and ever since Alistair Clarkson's pretty much made it evident that he won't be at Hawthorne next year, Hawthorne have started turning it around. So it's very weird, but big win for Hawthorne there. Geelong, clinical in the end against St. Kilda, but St. Kilda coming out strong. I think it was five or six goals they kicked straight before Geelong got on the board. I thought it was game over GG's, but Geelong hanging in there showing why they're one of the best. Then this game here. Carlton at one point were 20 points up, I think. And then it just went to shit. I don't know how you can go from being 20-odd points up to losing by 95 points. Anyway, Brisbane, absolutely clinical. Now, I have turned around and said that I feel the Bulldogs have one hand on the Premiership Cup. I've also said I feel Sydney is the dark horse for the Premiership I feel Brisbane have now taken a huge leap ahead of the Bulldogs, and I think it's Brisbane's premiership to be won this year. They will be the team that I'm going to be backing during the finals, as well as Sydney. And speaking of Sydney, they managed to get the job done against a very valiant North Melbourne side. Melbourne getting the job done against the Crows. People are probably wondering why I still don't give Melbourne a chance, but um, I feel... When you look at the brands of football being played, there are some teams that are playing a better brand collectively. That's just all I'm basing my opinion off of. Opinions are there to be made. Everyone's going to have their own. And I appreciate anybody that does have a different opinion. Or anyone who agrees with me. Essendon getting it done against the Gold Coast means more than likely Essendon are going to clinch that 8th spot on the ladder. Which... We've already seen the memes going around. It's been 15 years since Essendon won a final. Can they finally break that hoodoo? And Fremantle getting the job done against the West Coast was one of the things Richmond needed to stay alive. And it happened. But Richmond just couldn't get the job done. But as you can see here on the ladder, you've got Essendon sitting in 8th spot with West Coast and Fremantle both tied on 40 points. Richmond can get to 40. St. Kilda can get to 40. So you now look ahead at the week that is going to be this weekend and a lot rides on this game. GWS can't drop out because they're... Well, they can drop out if one of these teams... If two of these teams win. We'll get into that in a second. 
But we need to have a look and reflect on the competition as a whole. Eight was the most amount of tips correctly tipped, I believe. We're going to start from the bottom now. We're here. We're going to work our way up. And again, because this is the last tipping video for the year for the AFL Home and Away season, 67 competitors this year. The biggest I've had by far. I think we almost tripled our output this year. Thank you all so much for getting behind this season. I, I seriously cannot thank you enough. I still owe last year's winners their prize. I've been a little bit slack. COVID's kind of stuffed up a lot with myself. So when I give this year's winner their prize, last year's winner's going to get their prize as well. So Matt, I haven't forgotten about you. I apologize. Hang in there. But let's have a look here. We're looking for anybody who has tipped eight. And I know there is a couple up the top. Starting off with Benjamin A98. We then move up the ladder. We've got Dominic EZ. Followed by NATO. We keep going up and we've got RK Big Boy. Rockstar Pool 69. Shredder H. Onesie Lover. Congratulations to you all for tipping 8 out of 9 and being the most correctly tipped for the week. We've still got Is Don Is Good. Two game buffer heading into the final round. Needs to have a good round of tipping this weekend. And I feel there's a few 50-50 games on the line here. So it is open for, I feel from here, I'm going to say uh, Nintendo TN, Chip16 and Vince can steal it. It's going to have to be something incredibly drastic for 10th up to get it. But it's been a good year. As I said, I cannot thank you guys enough for getting behind the competition. For the last time for the Home and Away season for 2021, let's get our tips in and have a bit of a chat about what's going to go down this weekend. First game of the weekend has huge bearing on the top four because as it stands, if Port Adelaide win this game and Brisbane win theirs as Brisbane are expected to win, Brisbane will move into the top four and actually knock Bulldogs out of the top four because I think Brisbane have a better percentage. I could be wrong about that. I'll have to check it just to verify. But here at Marvel Stadium, Port Adelaide and the Bulldogs, I am going to tip the Bulldogs here to win. I think the top four is a lock. Um... Obviously, the upset would be Port Adelaide winning here. I think the Bulldogs are going to win it in a tight contest. I think we're going to go with uh, 19 points the way of the Bulldogs. If Port Adelaide win, there's no talk about Port Adelaide being in the Premiership race. It's the one club that I always seem to skim over. I don't know whether they can do it, but they could give things a real shake-up. They really could. MCG, Saturday afternoon, Richmond Hawthorne to round out the year. I'm going to back my boys one last time. Trent Cochin will not be playing this game after sustaining an injury from the GWS game. Hawthorne, coming off the back of a big win against the Bulldogs, I feel they're going to challenge Richmond. I would just love to see my boys finish on a high, just win the final game of the year. We go into the, uh, the preseason, the offseason, reset get some new players through the draft and trade period and as I said to the Richmond fans we bounce back next year I'm certain of it Marvel Stadium later on or that same afternoon we've got Sydney taking on the Gold Coast Suns Sydney are going to win that one and they will firmly actually they're a chance to get into the uh, the top four as well sneaky chance but Sydney are going to play finals this year, and I think that's great for the Sydney fans watching at home. I really think it is. At the Gabba, later on Saturday afternoon, Brisbane taking on the Eagles, and I think Brisbane are going to win this game. The last month has been absolutely phenomenal to watch. They're not just beating teams, they're absolutely destroying teams, and that's why I feel they should be, even though they're not on top of the ladder, they're out of the top four. I think they're the team to keep a close eye on in the finals. I really do. I think they can do the most damage out of any team within the top eight currently. 
GMHBA Stadium Saturday night sees Geelong taking on Melbourne. I think, is this a battle for top position? This will be a battle to determine who finishes as the minor premier. I'm actually going to back Geelong to win this game. Geelong, to me, I feel that some clubs can expose weaknesses within their build. I don't think Melbourne is going to be the club that can do that. I think Geelong have Melbourne covered. However, other clubs like Brisbane, who have a more potent forward line, I think that's where the damage gets done against Geelong because especially without Tom Stewart, they can open up a little bit of gap in Geelong's defense. But Geelong, I feel, should get it done over Melbourne. And then to round out Saturday night, Carlton taking on GWS. GW are going to win this one. I think it would be pretty clinical like they did against Carlton. And they're going to lock in their top... Well, they're locked into the top, the top eight at the moment. But that all just confirms it. And after the... 2019 Grand Final, I think GWS are going to be hunting for redemption. So Kilda Fremantle kicks off Sunday. Both of these teams have the possibility of... I don't think St. Kilda, actually. Can St. Kilda jump? Yes, they can. Both of these teams, mathematically as well, can jump into the top eight. I don't think they will, because I think Essendon's percentage is a little bit too rich. I... I'm going to back in. Now, this is hard because St. Kilda did a number on Geelong early, but Fremantle from the get-go had West Coast right where they wanted them. Do St. Kilda finish the year with a win or do Fremantle finish with a win? I'm going to go St. Kilda. I think St. Kilda's pace is going to play into factor and, and Nat Fife missing could be a bit of a problem. But Fremantle have proven they've got some youngsters with a lot of talent. Fremantle's going to start hitting a purple patch, pardon the pun. Sunday afternoon, Essendon Collingwood. This is where I think it's all over because I don't see Essendon losing to Collingwood here. Essendon played very well on the weekend and I don't see them dropping the ball against the Pies. That's, that's just my personal opinion. Can they break that finals hoodoo as I said? It's been 15 years. And the joke keeps going on and on and on. Will it be another year added to that, or will they finally win their first final? We'll find out next week, but for this week, I'm back in the Bombers. And to finish the year off, ladies and gentlemen, we have Adelaide taking on North Melbourne. I'm going to back Adelaide, but I feel North Melbourne could prove an upset just to mix things up. Now, Gauntlet is finished. If I move out of the way, eight players remaining in the minimum five, which is very interesting. To have a look over how I see the last round playing out, we're going with the Bulldogs, Richmond, Sydney, and Brisbane, as well as Geelong, GWS, St. Kilda, Essendon, and then Adelaide. Now, heading into the finals, I'm happy to do a finals tipping comp. It won't be for any prizes. It'll just be for fun if you want me to cover the finals as each week goes because there'll be less teams. We might be able to go a little bit more in depth into our predictions and we can talk about team selection and stuff like that. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section down below. It is that simple. Please leave a like on the video. Once again, to all 66 of you who joined myself for the ride this year, Thank you all so much. I hope to see all of you back next season. We'll go bigger and better. If we can get everybody back and gain some more, I think I might even up the prizes to not just who finishes on the top. We might do a top three, top five. I don't know. We might work something out there. But that's for next year. Let's just worry about the weekend that's going to be. Good luck to your teams this weekend. And as always, I will catch you guys next time.